Hey guys, even here, and 11 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, we have a little update of Hadi Chupan. Now, Hadi, he has been posting a lot of videos of himself training, a lot of updates, and it seems like he's only getting bigger and bigger and fuller and rounder and freakier looking, and uh, he's maintaining a really good level of conditioning, so I'm expecting Hadi to be much, much better this year than he was last year. Also, there was a thing that last year he wasn't sure if he's gonna be able to come to the US, you know, because of those travel issues, but he finally managed, you know, in the last minute he came. So, of course, that was very stressful uh, on him mentally and then, therefore, physically, surely. So I'm sure he would have been much better at last year's Mr. Olympia if he knew that he's gonna be able to compete and if he, for example, lived in America or something like that. The conditions were not that great last year, but now all the dust has settled and it's all much, much more clear and I'm sure he's gonna have a much smoother sailing. So at 11 weeks out, he looks gigantic, he looks enormous, he looks really, really big and conditioning is looking great and I'm sure by the time he's at the Mr. Olympia stage, He's gonna be a much improved bodybuilder and he potentially could win the Mr. Olympia this year. There are a couple of videos that he posted as well. So right here you can see him doing some shoulders. And just take a look at this guy. Get a grasp of how big Hari Chupan is right now. I mean, it looks like he gained a lot of mass. Look at the size of those, of those arms, all those biceps, man. And he's not known for big arms, actually. Everything else is actually bigger. Overall, a guy for of his height... He's enormous right now, seriously, like, he gained so much mass and he's in a great condition at 11 weeks out, so he's gonna be ripped, for sure. This is the, the, the story that he posted as well, so here you can see a full update, him doing some uh, vacuum, vacuum, yeah, and then absent eyes. I'm not really sure if this one is recent, but based on all we have seen so far, the other guys on the Mr. Olympia stage should be afraid of Hari Chupan because he is coming strong. Mr. Olympia is not in 11 weeks, but in 3 weeks, in Texas, bro, we're gonna see Steve Kuklo, and this is what he looks like right now. Now, this guy is one of those guys that are deceivingly big, because he's very tall, he has a wide, big frame, and he has enough muscle. I mean, he doesn't look small in these individual photos. These bigger, taller guys, they show what they actually are when they stand next to the other guys, because they are so big. And you can't really realize that until you see them standing next to the other guys who are shorter, smaller. Even though Steve is gonna dwarf some people, he does not look small standing here on his own. He looks big. He looks huge. And this guy is 285 pounds right now. In three more weeks, how much will he lose? 5, 10 pounds? He's still gonna be enormous. He's still gonna be gigantic. And the conditioning is coming along. It's spot on for three weeks out. He's gonna be really good and most likely will win the Texas Pro. However, do I like his physique? Sure, I like his structure, I like the completeness, I like the symmetry. What I don't like is his, I would call it, dead muscle. You cannot really see the deep separation, deep cuts. You can see muscle fibers. You do see a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle. You see very thin skin. He got rid of all the fat, and at the show day, he's gonna be depleted of water as well. The muscle will be pushing against the skin that looks very thin. So he's muscular, and he's in good shape, he's conditioned, but you just don't see the deep cuts. Why is this? Is it because he grew so much using stuff like insulin? Or is it simply genetic? I don't know. But you cannot see the muscle fibers. You can see vascularity, you can see a lot of veins. You can't say that he is conditioned, no doubt about that, but you don't see these kind of cuts, you know? You can see muscle fibers here, uh, especially in the quads and the chest, everywhere. The muscle looks alive. And that's something Steve simply doesn't have. Whether he's in condition or not, he doesn't have it genetically or for whatever reason. I mean, the only other reason I can think of is overuse of insulin. But I know that that is not the way Steve Google built his physique. He is incredibly strong. So he lifts heavy weights. That's how he built this physique up. It's not by doing like giant sets, pumping the blood and using insulin. No, it's by lifting heavy weights. So I don't think it's insulin. I think it's more likely just simply genetics. And it's also not the training. So he's training hard. He's training something like Dorian Yates used to train. And Dorian had crazy separation. So here, this is Indy Pro, and he was probably in his best condition, in my opinion, here. Still, it is a little bit better, but 
you don't see the deep cut, especially in the legs. More recently we saw Nick Walker, and this is the kind of separation I'm talking about. You can clearly see where which part of which head of the quadricep begins and where it ends, you can just see it very clearly. And that has never really been the case with Steve. However, his structure, the mass that he possesses, uh, the proportions, the lines, the symmetry, the, the conditioning, every everything is just good enough for him to be a like, top 6 Olympian, uh, best case scenario. For him to win the Texas Pro, yes, he can do it, he probably will win it. But as far as the Arnold Classic, he might, you know, crack the top 3, top 4, best case scenario. And as far as the Mr. Olympia, like the best case scenario, again, top 6, I can see that happening. Uh, for him to win Mr. Olympia or Arnold Classic, no, I don't see that. Uh, best case scenario, no, no. But, but still, he's an amazing bodybuilder. And I am I am predicting him winning the Texas Pro and qualifying for the Mr. Olympia. Because these photos that he uploaded are just absolutely amazing. He looks crazy, ridiculous. Texas is in three weeks, but sooner than that we're gonna see Tampa Pro, and this freak of nature will grace that stage. He's gonna be facing some really heavy hitters like Ian Valier, Rolly Winkler, so my expectations for Charles Griffin to actually win Tampa and qualify for the Mr. Olympia are rather slim, let's say slim to none. So I don't think he has big chances to win that show or to qualify for the Mr. Olympia anyhow, because I think there's only like two or three shows left to do that, so yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. However, Brett Wilkin, who was second in the Chicago Pro last weekend, is not gonna be doing Tampa Pro as he said. So him and his coach Matt Jensen talked about this and they decided to start the offseason. I guess they were thinking Ian Valier is doing this show, there is no chance for Brett to beat Ian. Very, very, very slim chances. Maybe, maybe if Ian comes completely off, but... I guess they realized that it shouldn't be hoping for that, because Hunter Hunter was able to beat Ian, yes, but Ian was like 50%, not 90, 80, 70%, no, he was like 40, 50%, I don't know, he was horrible, he was super, super flat, as flat as he can get, and that is the biggest issue with Ian, flatness, he's always conditioned, and now he learned with Patrick, he's not gonna be flat again. At the Mr. Olympia, yeah, Hunter was probably not as good as he was at Tampa last year, but Ian was on, and so he was better than Hunter. And now this year, Hunter did improve, but I think Ian improved more. But even if he didn't, I still think Ian at his best from last year is better than Hunter from this year. So I think Brad Wilkin and, and, and Matt Jensen realized that. So the chances for Brad Wilkin to qualify for the Mr. Olympia... I guess it can happen based on points, but what is the point of doing that? I mean, going to the Mr. Olympia just to be like 10th, best case scenario. I guess they realized and they made the right decision, if you ask me, to take an offseason, improve, and then come back next year and win a pro show, and then go to the Mr. Olympia. I think that's a smart way to do things now, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see Brad Wilkin make more progress and kill everybody next year. Oh yeah, about this, Mikhail Krizio doing Arnold Classic. No, no, bad news, he's not doing Arnold Classic. It was confirmed to me by his close associate. I can't, I don't know if I should name him, but I just won't do it. You guys take my word on it. Uh, he's not doing uh, Arnold Classic in IB Pro League, but rather the one in Spain that is in IBB Elite Pro. I'm not sure if it's happening in exactly eight weeks, like Arnold Classic in, in Ohio. Maybe he's just messing with us by giving us wrong number of weeks, <laughs> but no, he's not gonna be doing uh, Arnold Classic Ohio, he's gonna stay in IBB Elite Pro. And I think we kind of all basically knew this, if he was actually making a transfer to IBB Pro League, we would know about it, it would be made official, he wouldn't do it this way, <laughs> 10 weeks out of Arnold Classic, no, no, that was just having fun with his fans, this guy is a troll, like, he likes to have fun, to... to, to <laughs> To make jokes, yeah, he, he, he's a joker, for sure, so no, he's not going on a classic, but he looks absolutely ridiculous, and whichever Arnold Classic he's doing, I'm sure he's gonna win it, over there in Elite Pro, but uh, at Arnold Classic, if he did it, he would be like, I don't know, 7th, 8th, maybe, so what is the point, maybe someday, if he improves enough, is there a potential, yes, a lot of potential, he's like 30, 29, 30, so there is a lot of time for him to progress more, I would love to see him eventually, in IB Pro League and Arnold Classic or Mr. Olympia, whatever, but not this year, unfortunately, no. 
In case you guys were wondering, Big Remy is not taking it easy. He didn't really post a lot of stuff, but here is a video of himself training. And yes, this is recent because he's wearing enhanced athlete t-shirt and that is his most recent sponsor. He looks big, his usual size, maybe a little bit uh, flatter than usual, maybe he's not exactly at his best, but he's uh, prepping. So he started training really hard and I'm sure he's gonna be he's gonna be spot on at the Mr. Olympia. Is he gonna be better than last year? Or worse? Or the same? I don't know. Do I see him winning it again this year? I don't think it's very firm. I mean, he's top spot. I don't think it's really set in stone. If anybody else of like top, top, top three, top four guys bring their absolute best and he comes the same or a little bit off, he can be dethroned, for sure, I can see that happening. I don't think Big Remy is gonna be a Mr. Olympia for many, many years. I don't really see that happening because of his conditioning. Alright, Jeremy Buendia. It's been a while since we saw this guy on stage. He was, I think, four or five times men's physique Mr. Olympia champion. A lot of fuss about him, a lot of drama. Uh, this guy had some uh, issues with, uh, I think, domestic abuse and all kinds of stuff, so he's basically well known, everybody knows about him, whether you're a bodybuilder, or a classic physique guy, or a man's physique competitor, you know who Jeremy Buendia is, and he's a former bodybuilder, so recently he has been posting a lot of bodybuilding poses, and my assumption is that he is trying to gain enough size to try to compete in classic physique. Now, based on these photos, do I think he can be, oh, and this video as well, do I think he can be a top classic physique guy if he ch makes that change? Can he be a good classic physique pro? I don't think so, honestly. I don't think so. I think his chest after the injury got really flat and I don't think he can actually bring it back because so far he grew, but not, not in that region. The back, not very good back. Lats are really high. The torso is very long. Legs also need a lot of work. Overall, he needs a lot of mass, but even if he added all the mass somehow with time, does he have the best classic physique structure? I don't think so. I don't really see it. I'm not saying he is horrible for classic physique, but I don't think he can be like a top Olympian, like he was in men's physique. No, no, I don't see that. How about you guys? Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. And tell me, do you think uh, Jeremy Potvin, another Jeremy from men's physique, will do better? In classic physique because he also made a transfer and he's he's posting uh, most recent physique updates lately and his legs i think they grew a little but still i mean his upper body is absolutely dwarfing his legs he still needs to bring those legs up big time and even if he does does his upper body look classic again i don't see it i don't think he can be a top classic physique competitor at the mr olympia stage like he was in man's physique if he was just a nobody both of these guys, Jeremy Buendia and Potvin, if these guys were nobodies posting their physique updates, I wouldn't think much of them, but I know that they are top man's physique competitors, so maybe when he peaks perfectly after the diet and if he does everything, all the protocols right, he's gonna look much more impressive than this, obviously, for sure, both of them, but to be a top classic physique competitor, I think it requires something else. Here's a classic physique for you, <laughs> Brian Jones. I don't know if you guys follow this guy and if you remember him from Mr. Olympia, he was top 6. He's doing Arnold Classic this year, he was really impressive on that stage and this is him right now. 8 weeks out of Arnold Classic. What the hell? What the hell? How these classic guys are so big? He looks just as big as Flex Wheeler at his biggest. Okay, maybe not 1999, but it's close to it. Definitely bigger than 1993 version of Flex Wheeler. Look at the mass in his delts, in his in his legs, in his arms. How this guy can fit the weight cap? Look at how big he is. And why is he wearing bodybuilding trunks? Is he gonna switch to bodybuilding? Is he that big? No, I, I saw his name at Classic Physique competitor list, so he's doing Classic Physique. But he looks so much bigger than anybody else in classic physique. He looks like he can dwarf Chris Bumster or Terence Ruffin or whoever. Alex Cambronero and the other guys. Like Nobody looks this big in classic physique. I don't know how this will translate to the stage. Maybe he needs to sacrifice a lot of muscle and come really flat and just look bad. But he looks absolutely enormous here. And uh, it, it scares me, honestly, guys. I want to be a classic physique competitor one day, but... 
if I need to grow this much, I don't think this is gonna happen because this is this is a genetic freak right here. Look at the size of this guy. God. And those man physique guys trying to transfer to classic physique, they have no chance. I mean, they don't look anything like Brian Jones. However, Brandon Hendrickson right here, who is preparing to defend his Mr. Olympia title in men's physique, who won it, I believe, two times, 2020 and 2018, I think. Uh, him, right now, he looks like a promising classic physique competitor. Look at his physique, look at his front double bicep. It's really a pity that this guy can't showcase this in men's physique. It's really a shame. He has good legs. They could be bigger, for sure. I mean, Brian Jones laughs at me when I say he has good legs. But they're not horrible, and they're nice inserted, so he can grow them for sure. And the upper body, I mean, uh, the, the rib cage, the lats popping, the arms, the small waist, the wee taper, overall, it looks classic. It looks really nice. It still needs a lot more muscle, not a lot more, but some more muscle. And I think he can do really, really well in classic physique. I hope he does make the transfer, because he looks really promising. What do you guys think? Whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section, like this video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe guys for more bodybuilding videos like this. All the best guys and bye bye.